Welcome everybody to Dark Star Citizen. Today we're going to be talking about how to get started in Star Citizen. Uh, it's a pretty confusing game when you really think about it. There's not really a tutorial, so we're going to just kind of go run down like how you get started, what your first steps in the game should be, and um, the first step is going to be actually creating the account. So we're going to do that now. So in order to create the account, when you get to the Star Citizen website, it's going to go to this page here. And you're going to go to the upper corner. Well, on my screen, it's just straight top because I have a really widescreen display. But you're going to click on account and you're going to click on enlist now. You're going to put your information in here, uh, call sign, which is going to be the actual name of what people see in game. Um, that's going to be the actual name of your character. So make sure you actually set that to what you want it to be your email, your password, date of birth, pretty standard stuff, and a referral code. If you have, so have a referral code. Now, um, Luckily, all of my videos come with a little referral code in the description, and that benefits both you and me, but your, the benefit to you will be you get an additional 5,000 UEC to start when the game launches, and that'll actually be really helpful, because depending on the package, you may only start with anywhere between 1,000 and 5,000 UEC, so it'll give you a little extra to get yourself going. Alright, so once you have created your account and enlisted, you're going to get an option to purchase your pledge. Now, by default, the pledge that you will be directed to is going to be either the Mustang Alpha Starter Pack or the Aurora MR Starter Pack. And then you'll also have the option to add Squadron 42, um, the single player game for an additional twenty dollars. Now the single player game um, is actually going to be it looks pretty cool when it's going to be finished. You got a lot of good actors and everything in it to to work with it, and it actually is does have some integration and will have some bearing on the persistent universe. So like uh, certain actions that you take in there may unlock the ability to get certain ships in the persistent universe. But you're going to pick your starter pledge. Um, I mean this is. Top call between the two, it really depends on what you want to do in the verse. Um, if you're going to be more of less of a combat person, um, and even honestly some combat pilots take the Aurora because it's, it's an effective ship, but if you're going to be a combat guy, like and primarily you want to go with the Mustang, although honestly I, I think everyone should start with the Aurora, it is way more versatile. and. Depending on the ship you're starting with, making money uh, via combat is not the easiest thing to do right off the bat, especially if you have a little experience. And we're going to talk about uh, some of the other starter ships here real quick because there are other starter package options that you will have access to once you purchase your initial pledge. And I will, I will show you that. So once you actually have a pledge and purchase a pledge, you'll have access to the additional game packages, like we saw here. So you'd go to the pledge store. By default, you'll see the additional view of all game packages. Now in here, you see a lot more other options than just the uh, base Aurora and Mustang Alpha. You'll also see some options that come with the Squadron 42 combo. So the first of them is the 100i starter pack. Uh, the 100i is Kind of a, it's a starter ship. It's from Origin, so it's a lot sleeker and neater looking. It's not a bad ship, um, but it is still along the lines of the base starter line vessel. It does not have a lot of firepower, but it does have an interior with a bed. Uh, the Pisces does not have an interior with a bed, but it does have an interior. It's got two seats and it's got some jump seats and it's got some cargo room. Um, nice little shuttle, uh, four size one guns, pair size one missiles, but not. The strongest combat ship so like really good for like box running missions and if you're going to do some really really small cargo runs but cargo runs of that size aren't worth it these packages just include the squadron 42 combo 
The Avenger Titan is actually a really great starter ship, excellent combat ship, excellent box running ship, has an interior, has a bed. The Anvil Arrow is a great little light fighter. Um, definitely the least durable of all the light fighters, but it's very maneuverable, has a lot of firepower, does not have an interior or a bed. Um, Alright, so now we're getting to the next, to honestly, in my opinion, the two best starter ships if you're going to increase, you know, thinking about increasing your pledge price um, over the initial 45. The Nomad starter and the Cutlass Black are honestly two phenomenal ships. They can both hold the rock mining vehicle, which is a little personal ground mining uh, buggy that we can, we'll get into later when we get into mining in another video. But... Nomad's fantastic, has an interior, has good defenses with three, three size one shields, three size up to three size three fixed weapons, size two gimbals, um, interior bed, bathroom, a little kitchenette area, and has some decent cargo capacity for a ship in size, and that cargo capacity on the back, it's open air, so we call it the space pickup truck almost, and that's where you'd also put the rock mining vehicle. Great little ship. Cuddy Black is a little bit of a step up. Um, it's one of the first first multi-crew vessels that you'll have access to um, because it does have a uh, co-pilot seat, which will have functionality in the future, you know, in future iterations of the game as it progresses. And it does have a manned turret that you can set someone up in, and it's a pretty decent turret. It's got size three guns, so it's actually pretty nice. And then it, there's up to four jump seats in the back. It's got a couple beds. It's a, it's a decent little ship. It's got some weapon racks for storing uh, FPS weapons. It's got decent cargo capacity and it can hold ground vehicles up to uh, cyclones and, and the rock mining buggy. So it's, it's a pretty good ship. Um, so between these two, these are probably the two best starter ships in my opinion for most people because they can both do combat equally as effectively as well as uh, any non-combat cargo box run missions and can allow you to do some mining if you have the mining corresponding mining vehicle. And they both have missiles, a uh, decent missile. This thing has a lot of missiles, has like 24 by default. This thing comes with eight size twos. Um, so both great ships. Um, up from there, I mean, you can get the F7C Hornet. Freelancer Miss is a great uh, multi-use, uh, multi-crew ship. Constellation Dromeda, once again. But we're, we're getting into much more expensive packages here. And, you know, for the average person, you're probably not going to want to invest that much uh, just to play the game. And then, in, you know, down the road, there's also upgrading. You can upgrade ships. You can melt packages. We'll get into all that later. Right now, we're just going to focus on the basic starter ships. All right. Once you load up your launcher and first get in the game, you're going to start in a screen that's like this. Now, you're gonna first thing you're going to see is your little options menu down here. There's a few things you may want to go in here and set. Um, some of the graphics are a little, little squiffy, like I turn off motion blur. Um, sharpening, I set to zero. Chromatic aberration, I set to zero. Film grain, I set to no. These are all on and up by default. Um, it will increase your graphic performance. I have a, a very powerful computer and a, a good graphics card. I got a, a RTX 3070, but it is an alpha. It's not entirely optimized, so turning down some of these settings very much helps. Also, another setting that may help um, that they've had issues with in the past is they have the uh, face over IP um, head tracking where you can actually see your characters like you actually if you have like a camera set up it will actually mimic your facial expressions um, which is pretty neat uh, it's actually a really cool feature but you want to turn that off make sure that's off because it'll, it'll it, can, it has caused problems for people uh, with latency and lag so those are just the big ones. Um, general game settings, there's a lot in here. I mean, up to including, like, you can turn off head movements and stuff like that, because your head will turn with your ship and stuff, so you can always stay focused on the crosshair. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's very in-depth. We'll probably get into it in a more in-depth tutorial at some point. Uh, key binding. Another big one. You can go here just to look up your default key bindings for your mouse and keyboard. If you're flying with sticks, 
you gotta switch the sticks and advanced customization this is where you can bind all your keys this is also gets very in depth there's a ton of stuff you can bind in this you can also use a gamepad and you're obviously your mouse and keyboard but you have to make sure you set it to your right control input when you're when you're going to set these otherwise it'll you'll be programming the wrong way all right so that's that let's uh let's get started first things you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to create a character now i've already done this but you would go down here and there's gonna be an option here to begin blending you have to actually do that now the interesting thing is so you can go through here and you can select different facial features and as you you'll notice there's a slider you can as you drag that slider it adds or subtracts features from that set so you can kind of customize your character a little now, i already had one made but i'm going to go with a little go with a little additional customization as it never hurts just gives you a little bit more of a unique look. Uh, you can customize everything from your eye color, hair, so there's a lot of different options. I mean everyone has their own look. And when you're done you accept, you save, and when you want it ready to go into the system. So the other thing you'll notice is there's a few menus here, Star Marine, Arena Commander, these are like battle arena modes. Um, anytime you want to go into the actual persistent universe here, we'll get into what these do later because there are some functionality with them. So when you're ready to go in the Stanton system, you're ready, you can select, you can go to your hangar. Um, these are your personal hangers depending on what pledge you have. You may have options. Currently it seems like the hangar selection is disabled. Um, there is an upcoming patch coming up, so sometimes they disable some features when there's a, a major patch. So, not too concerned about that right now, but you'll see that later, depending on the pledge, you'll determine the kind of different personal hangers you have access to. Some are larger, if you have some of the larger ships. Alright, so once you go in, you can select location. On the left there, there was an option to select location where it said best. Um, you can change it to US, EU, or I believe Australia. Um, so you can select the different, uh, select different zones, but it's generally better to leave it on best unless you're specifically trying to only get a specific server type or you're having a problem, like say the US servers are having an issue that day, and you can go on the EU servers, vice, you know, vice versa. Now one of the things I can't stress enough, depending on load times, if you have this loaded on a non-SSD hard drive, it's going to take a long, long time to load. You want to have this on an SSD hard drive. It's very important. All right, once the game has loaded you in, this is where you're going to spawn in. So right now we are on Lorville. This would be the uh, starting location that um, that I started at. There are a couple others. You can spawn at Area 18 or New Babbage. Um, as far as initially getting started out and making some money, this is probably one of the better places to start. Uh, Babbage is a better place to start out if you have money and you want to upgrade your ships. There's a lot of good stuff there. Um, but this is this is one of the better places to go to get started. So you're going to spawn in your bed. There's a couple ways you can get out of your bed. Um, so one of the ways you're going to implement, uh, manipulate the world around you is through inner thought. You hold F and you can move the cursor around to look around to see different options. Um, you'll see option get up your left and right. Uh, the easiest way to get out of bed is Y. It's the same key that you use to get up out of seats or exit the pilot seat on your ship. Um, this is a little habitation module that you spawn in. There's really not much to do in here currently. I mean, there's a bathroom back here behind this door, but it doesn't really serve any function yet. Um, there's actually a useful uh, thing. You can make coffee. Um, so you actually could drink coffee, but there's no coffee cup, so... There's nothing for it to build up. If you had a cup, you could grab it, bring it over there, place it on there, and then it would fill your coffee cup, and then you could get a drink, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I don't think there are already uh, coffee mugs in here uh, for us to be able to do that with, but that's okay. 
So you, you look at the door to get out, you look at this little icon here, you can just press up on it and it'll open or you can hold that and left click and it'll open. You're going to come out here, this is the dormitory hallway, there's you know a few different dorms and there's actually multiple levels of this where players can get in and out. Once you exit the dorm you can currently not get back in, eventually you'll be able to re-enter your own personal dormitory. Get your first view of the surface of Lorville. Um, I mean, this is specifically the city of Lorville uh, on Hurston. Uh, surface is much different. Uh, there's nothing on the lower level uh, that concerns you at this point in time, unless you happen to spawn down there, then you just run up the stairs. What you're looking for is the elevator, which is up here. Um, you just hold F, and left click on the call elevator. The elevator will come up. And you just walk in, hold F for your inner thought, scroll down to see ground floor, and click on that. You'll notice there are six floors present, so that's how many uh, always there are currently uh, of dorms for people to spawn here. And when you first exit the elevator, you'll be here in this little hallway. Uh, currently, there's no functionality over here, so you're going to head this way. Uh, this is going to take you to the tram station and you come out here you get another view of the city of Warville. So that is actually the, uh, the spaceport over there. So that's where the ships take off from and land at and we'll, that's actually where we will be heading. Need a job? Uh, there are other places to go here on Lorville where you can purchase equipment um, for your ships as well as for yourself. Um, currently there's no reason to do that so basically you just want to kind of follow the pathway so when you come up here you should be look you go come in here you're gonna look you, look, you want to look for signs uh, so this is a metro center um, well that sign shows you that this is when the hospital gameplay comes in later this year as well as uh, repair money and uh, you know food and beverages and stuff that way but none, none of that stuff's really implemented at the moment so we are going this way towards the metro center and this is going to take us to the spaceport this will also take us to the trade district um, but there's like I said we're not going there right now that'll be something we cover in a later video this is just about taking your first steps in the game so we get here to the spaceport and tram and we just have to wait for the tram to arrive. You usually see a nice little hand timer that will tell you when the tram is coming. And the tram is here so we're just going to get in. It will tell you when it's departing which is very helpful and you'll see that on either side. Uh, if you want you can take a seat on any of the seats but I am going to give you a nice little view of our trip to the spaceport. One of the things I noticed that they seem to have done very well is they, it's a very industrialized city here, so they did a great job of giving us that, that smog and pollution from the city in here, here. It looks very hazy. Um, I think they did a great job capturing that. The rest of the planet is not like that. So this, this effect is wears away as you leave this area. Now arriving, Metro Center. Please watch your steps when disembarking the train. Nothing or attempting to trespass on train track is a serious and dangerous offense. Okay. So, we are exiting the train station. There is another one here that will take you to the business district. There you can purchase uh, certain uh, weapons for your ship as well as the trading hub is there if you're a trader and you have cargo to deliver. Uh, we are going this way towards the start port. You will have to pass through these security checkpoints and if you do have a crime stat, these guards will shoot you and send you to jail. These terminals here, you'll see them at spaceports, you'll see them at space stations. 
very important because you can get fines, and those fines can turn into actual uh, crime stats. You can get crime stat 1 through 5, and anything below crime stat 3, you do not, like 1 and 2, you do not get a bounty placed on you or other players will hunt you, but NPCs will still shoot at you, it will still make it so you can't land on uh, legal space stations, legally operated space stations by the UEE and Hearst and Security and so forth. So you want to go and if you do get a fine, you want to take care of it as soon as possible. You just go up to it and click use. Any fines that you would have would appear here and you can pay them individually or choose to pay them all. Um, obviously take care of the older ones first. And we're going to keep going to the security checkpoint. So one of the things you may notice that uh, when you first started out as well, um, you may walk very slow your first time in the game. You want to scroll your mouse wheel up to increase your default walking speed. So you can actually scroll it up and down to change your, your walking speed. And shift is a sprint, so anyone familiar with FPS gameplay will know that. Uh, customs and information, a lot of this stuff will have functionality in the future. Two more of those authority terminals for paying your fines. And once we get up in here, this is the main area of the starport. So here are your ship terminals. This is where you're going to go to access your, your starships, any ships that you have. Uh, you can summon them here. You can claim them if they're destroyed uh, here, or as well as if you left them somewhere else. Um, that will change in the future. You won't just be able to claim a ship that is at another station. Um, because claiming a ship is actually the same thing against your insurance, so there will probably be a whole system for transferring ships between stations and stuff. Um, what else we have in here? We got an ISIL M50 interceptor on display, an old racing ship it's from Origin. Uh, this way is the shop where you can purchase ships, New Deal. Um, so here you, you can actually tour some vessels here. Uh, Mustang, they have a Constellation Phoenix and the Hammerhead, which is currently the largest military ship, multi crew ship that's available in the game uh, for players to use. One ship will uh, we'll do some a multi crew video um, and probably feature the Hammerhead in it. Uh, in here, you can see the Prospector, which is going to be your first mining ship. Welcome uh, to New Aura and the 85X Snub Fighter. But this is where you can purchase you ships, you go to the terminal here, and check out. this allows you to buy ships for UEC, AUEC, LPUEC. Um, so you'll probably see two different currency types. You'll see UEC and Alpha UEC. UEC is going to be the actual currency once the game is live. They put the A in front of it for Alpha, because, and they'll probably put a B for Beta B once the Beta log goes live, because they don't want people Definitely to take a look around. that with money that, you know, they'll have it live because they won't have it. Here you can rent ships. So if there's a ship you wanted to try out um, and you're not sure before you purchase it, either both you know, with real money for a pledge or in-game, you can rent it here and you can rent it for 24 hours, you can rent it for 30 days. So one day, three days, seven days, 30 days, and a lot of different ships you can rent. Arrow, Drake Ball. Here you can't rent the, the Cutlass, but there are places you can. Um, right. So, all manufacturers, this is what you can rent from more. We have a few ships here. You can rent the Constellation Andromeda, which is a fun ship, great multi crew ship, 600i exploration. Also, a big, big ship could be used for multi crew, it can also be used solo because it does have some big pilot fired guns. And it has a large shield, so it's very tough, but also expensive. I mean, 284,000 credits for a single, you know, 24 hour rental. So these are the kind of things that you would do when you when you want to try a ship out before you do it. And actually, another fantastic thing you can do, is, um, which you can also do at the um, mining station, so any station that has a uh, or refinery. For cargo deck, you can go down to and you can rent a prospector. Uh, prospector is the mining. 
which you can do for, you know, for the same thing, one day, three days, seven days, 30 days, so forth. And you can use that to make money without having to buy one. Doing mine. Once I said previously, we'll get into mining in a different tutorial. So let's go and get you, uh, get you out in the space. So you're going to come to your ship panel here. Now I have a lot of ship, depending on what you pledge, which you know I always recommend anyone looking to get into this game that you know don't make anything more than the initial base pledge because you can play this game perfectly fine without ever investing more than the initial um, pledge, which is basically purchasing the base game. So I'm going to go down to the ship that you will probably have when you're starting out, which would be the Aurora. Uh, hello. The other option would be the Mustang for the, the purely combat dedicated pilots, but um, like I said, I, I recommend the Aurora for versatility. And the NPCs will chatter around you and stuff, hello. give you a little bit of atmosphere. They actually do a really uh, great job with that. All right, so it says it's in Hangar 9. So we have to go over to the elevators. Going on here. Going to be over here on the left. We're going to package and call your elevator and you get a nice little indicator showing you what your, where your ship is and what hangar it's in in case you forget. So you go to hangar 9, that's a, a newer feature that they added I believe in 12. But it's a great feature because it's something they didn't have in the past and if you forgot what hangar you did after you ran away from the terminal wall, and sometimes I would, uh, you'd have to run back and actually look at the hangar. So to get into the Aurora, you're going to have this little hatch on the side. You look at it, with inner thought, you can either just straight up open the door in the ladder. Uh, easiest option is just to click on your ship. You will automatically, from the animation, and climb into your ship. And yes, all ship entries and exits are fully animated. You put a lot of detail into that. You have a little personal light on most armors, but we are not. We uh, when you start out, you're not wearing armor. So that's actually one of the things I didn't get into. Is uh, well, I can ship real quick. Let's see, is what you start with. Yeah, what you start with in this game is not much. You have a basic spacesuit. Um, it's actually one of the better ones as far as. protection from elements and so that's the basic space it's the Odyssey um, you get the Odyssey helmet you start with a little uh, arc light laser pistol it comes with 30 rounds you do not have any spare magazines and you get a single medi pen to equip yourself with so this is going to be one of the most functional tools in the game it's called the Moby Glass uh, you're going to use this for a lot currently and you also use this for your inventory system to equip yourself um, you'll have the multiple options out communications, uh, your vehicle loadout manager, so you can change the equipment on your ship, your equipment manager, change the loadout on your person, skyline, which is the map of the system, and this is where you plot courses, uh, the trader, and this is where you can actually send money uh, to other contracts manager, this is where you will take missions, uh, we will get into that. Live works, modify ship port equipment. This is currently not something that we uh, are using. This is the maintenance for when your ship is on a manning pad. This will allow you to repair, restock. We'll get into that once we get up to this. Your journal, which will tell you uh, some of the things that you've recently done. And your reputation manager, which is a new feature of 313 that will actually show you your reputation with different groups, uh, so I do a lot of bounty hunting. Um, my bounty hunter builds re build reputation. I build, and because of also building reputation with Hurston Security, which increases my payouts, so stuff is all helpful. Now the downside is this can also go into negative standing, and like if you do criminal acts and hurt your reputation, negative standing, you won't be able to take bounty missions. You won't get a bonus payout for performing missions in Hurston. Um, same thing with Crusader and the other areas uh, all have their own reputation and security. Then you can also build a reputation with contacts, individual people. Now, Miles Eckert, for example, is in competition with Northrock. So doing missions for Northrock will hurt your reputation with Miles Eckert and vice versa. Um, so reputation matters. Um, it's starting to matter in the game. 
uh, they'll lose too much reputation with a certain faction, you may no longer be able to land there. Um, like for example, Grimhax, you won't be able to land at the station anymore. So, stuff like that can happen. Um, but, this is our Aurora. We're going to go ahead and get in. And we're going to go into space. Alright, so you're going to hold that, get into your pilot seat for the first time. And this is what you are going to see. Now, there's a couple things ways you can power up your ship. You can hit R to power up all of the systems, uh, make it flight ready immediately. You can hit U to power it up, just to power the ship up, Welcome and then to I to power up the engines. But if you just press R, R will power on the entire ship right off the, the bat. It'll turn your engines and your, and your power on and take off. So you're in a hangar. Um, hold Z, uh, free look with the mouse while you're holding Z, free look with the mouse to look up. Um, when I went into third person view before, I used F4. It will allow you to go into third person view, and holding Z allows you to spin your camera with the mouse. Um, but you'll notice that we have a door above us, um, so we can't just take off. We have to go into our Mobiglet and Comlink friends and actually call Lorville Landing Service by pressing this little button here. Now, that called the Landing Authority. They gave us clearance to launch. Um, you can also access that here in the comms menu. Uh, when you spawn, just spawn the ship, the Lorville will place your at will always be at the top. But when you go somewhere else, it'll be all the way at the bottom. And you'll have to hold F on the MFD and scroll down with your mouse wheel. Alright, we're going to launch for space now. So, spacebar will raise your ship up. It'll operate the lower thrusters. Um, so we are launching right now. Hit F4 to go into external third person view. So you can actually see yourself taking off. And we're going to want to lower the throttle limiter down to lower our maximum speed so we don't accidentally run into anything as we're taking them up. And we're just kind of clearing the hangar now. And as we get outside of the hangar, you will take a little look around our ship with Z. Just to see us get up there. Normally the doors will begin closing. Sometimes they don't do so right away. And we're going to hit N to raise our landing gear. Notice that as I move the mouse cursor around, the ship heads in the direction that the cursor direction indicator is pointed to, and it goes and slows down as it stops as I go back to the center crosshair with it. Um, you have a couple other controls, Q and E, or roll your ship. So we're going to exit the atmosphere, so we're going to raise the throttle limiter Thank up you. real high, so we can exit the atmosphere much quicker. And there's a couple different ways that you can enter the atmosphere, but we're going to set it to SC, uh, SCM bar here, which is like a standard combat speed. Uh, that's where you have your most vulnerability. And you can go a little bit above that and go higher to run, but you generally don't want to go outside of that. So we're going to press W to go forward. And we obviously don't want to hold that down the whole time, so you press C to activate your cruise control mode. Now, you can't just quantum jump straight out of the atmosphere. You have to exit the atmosphere first, so different planets and moons have different height levels that you have to exit the atmosphere, so on the right you will see the altimeter. And I'll tell you what altitude we're at, on the left you'll see your max velocity and speed. And also on the left you'll see your gear indicator, your coupled mode, which we'll get into what that is later. Uh, ESP, same thing. Your decoy and noise are going to be your countermeasures. You can see the exact count of how many of those are available. 
and on the right hand side of the hood you'll see marks one, and you'll see two of those, so those are your missiles, they are located on the top of the ship, and you'll also see your fuel indicator on the right hand side, it's going to have your quantum fuel, which is at 100 currently, so you haven't jumped anywhere yet, and your hydrogen fuel, which is currently slowly going down, that's the fuel for your main thrusters. And there are the two missiles at the top of the ship. And those, so the indicator you saw there was a Wi-Fi indicator to indicate your cross-section missiles. You see those little carrier domes on the front of the ship. That's how you can tell, visually tell a cross-section missile because it actually uses imagery to actually lock on to the ship. It actually locks on to your visual cross-section, so those are like infrared cameras. Getting away from the city of Lorville, a pretty big city. And the entire city doesn't have a lot to do with it there, but they will be adding more functionality and more things to do in the cities. So you hit B to spool your condom drive, and you saw like a whole bunch of stuff come up, including Everest Harbor. Everest Harbor is always located directly over in Lorville, but you see a whole bunch of other quantum destinations. Now, we can just jump straight there right now by holding down B to engage the drive, but we're going to open our navigation window and we're going to double click on the Hurston system and scroll in until we actually see Everest Harbor. We're going to click on that and we're going to click select route. So that's going to take the course for Everest. So now when you drive a school, that'll be the only indicator that you see. Um, so it's a little less confusing, guaranteed a straight jump, plus if you're also not sure where the orientation of your ship is, like where you have to aim your ship at. Auto drive is now off. All right, so we are now just outside of Everest Harbor. Um, we are going to have to head in. All right, so we are now on our way in towards Everest Harbor. It's a little dark here because of the position of the sun currently. We're going to slow our auto throttle back a little bit by scrolling the wheel down and you can even hit X space brake if you slow yourself down further. And we're going to take a nice slow approach into the space station so we do not accidentally run into it. I can do this much faster but that comes with practice and experience. I definitely do not recommend trying that on your first flight. So we're going to call for landing. You have to call for landing. So you're going to go here. Good friend, Everest Harbor should be the first option unless you have a target. If you have somebody targeted, then they will be the first, and then the station will be the second. So you get a little indicator here, and that is actually your landing so your landing pad. So you want to end to lower your landing gear. Landing gear deployed. And because it's dark, you may want to hit L to turn your ship's exterior lights on. And once you get closer, it'll help us. Uh, we're going to disengage the auto. And we're going to slow our, we're going to lower our throttle limiter down. Control will help lower your ship down. A and D helps you strafe left and right. Yes, there's full strafing in this game. So you can strafe left, you can strafe right. So I'm not using the mouse at all. Space bar up, control down, W forward, S back. You have reverse thrusters, Q E roll you, and the mouse will actually change your the actual direction your ship is facing. So it'll let you do turns and climbs and dives. Okay, so we are going to go forward. And there's two different ways you can land. You can land manually, or you can do the automated landing. When you first start playing, I recommend probably going with the automated landing system. All you have to do is get your ship in the little box and then hold N. The game will automatically land your ship. Safest way to land, because if you touch down too hard, you can damage your ship, explode. Um, and when you're first starting out, you don't really have a lot of money. So anything you can do to avoid any expenditure and money is important. All right, now that you're here, it was a short trip up here, so you may not you may not have spent much, so you spent a little bit of hydrogen, you have 91 hydrogen, 91 percent hydrogen fuel left, 99 percent quantum, it was a very short quantum jump. Um, you can restock your ship if you want, but depending on your starter packages, you may only have, uh, I believe in the Alpha you automatically get 5,000 AUAC to start anyway, 
um, but come live you may only have a thousand UEC and yeah as you can see you're, you know your ship no matter what even though we didn't do anything will always suffer have some basic repair that can, can happen you do not have to do this every time um, this is basically eventually your ships have wear and like the paint and the wear and they'll just take you know, to damage from use um, my, very minor stuff, no actual physical hull damage, but some of the components may wear and take damage. So you will eventually want to repair your ship. It's not to be done every time. Refuel hydrogen, refuel quantum. Obviously, you can see it would be a really insignificant uh, impact on your resources to do this, but it isn't necessary. I will, just because I like to store all my ships. Um, in hell to turn your lights off. I like to store all my ships with them being in case I you know, want to use them again, but when you're first starting out, not necessary to do that. Um, you may also want to turn your engine off uh, by hitting I. Um, I'm not concerned with that right now. And as you can see, you do have a little bed back here. So there is a little sleeping bed that you can get into and out of, so you have a bed on the ship. Alright, so we're just going to exit the ship. Now, have landed. At Everest Harbor. Everest Harbor is now your spawn location. So next time you spawn into the game, you will not spawn down there on Lorville. Look, you can actually see how massive the city of Lorville is and that, that huge, massive, like, building, you know, like, arch building that they have there. You can actually see it from here. It's pretty cool. Um, so instead of down there. Um, so this is now your new spawn point for the next time you're loading the game. Um, so right now, this is obviously we're in space, there's no atmosphere. Out Bad. As soon as you cross into here, here, you know, field use them. Star Wars use those like magnetic fields around their hangars and stuff. So that's how you can breathe in here. Um, so you call the elevator. We got lucky; the elevator is already here. We're gonna take the elevator to the lobby. This is the main lobby of the spaceport. Here you'll go to your starship. If you have a lot of ships, you'll scroll down until you find it. Otherwise, it'll be like the first ship. It'll be the only ship on the And you'll just click store. The reason why you're storing it is because otherwise it'll stay on the pad. Um, if you need to put the pad too long, you could get you know, you know, stored for you and you could get a fine, like a 500 credit fine to get it back. But you know, 500 credits is a lot if you only have 1,000. So make sure you come up and store your ship. Um, plus, it also protects it. So, in case somebody decides that they want to shoot at your ship landing at the pad, it won't get blown up because, once again, um, you can claim the ship. Claiming the ship currently doesn't cost you anything, but to expedite the ship to get it quicker, otherwise you'd have to wait out the whole timer for the ship to come back, it does cost money. It depends on the cost of the ship. Uh, important place to come over to in case you are running low on food. Um, there's two ways. Uh, if you need to eat or drink, you can purchase uh, you can purchase both of these count as just drinks in order to replenish your water. Um, you will see those indicators in the lower left-hand corner when you are thirsty or hungry. Uh, currently, right now, they're not there because I am neither of those things. Um, but you come over here and you can purchase burrito, a light eat, your stock of food supply. Food looks like a little, um, like a leaf and a couple other icons. I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't remember the exact uh, icon. And water is just a little you know, water drop. So over here, there are going to be players to uh, we go spawn into up here. Uh, there's no reason to go up there unless you're, you know, spawn between now. 
there's nothing you can do up there. You can turn into the Habs currently. Up road, you'll, you'll have a sign to you where you'll have purchased, uh, where you can store gear of some that, uh, that will have functionality. These are the gears down to the shop levels and the cargo deck on this station. Um, currently, we'll get into you know those later. Um, not really much to do there. So, congratulations, you managed to get off the planet. You are now in space. Um, you're probably wondering, what do I do next? Well, that's a good question. There is a lot of things that you can do. Um, you're going to want to start by probably making money. And there's a lot of things you can do to do that. Um, that's where the contracts manager comes into play. Um, if you're not in a strong uh, combat have your RMR, which is not a really strong combat ship, at least until it's upgraded, is do some delivery missions to make money. Um, you'll see some of these will pay you 8,000 UBC. QT sensitive cargo, if you see this, means you cannot quantum jump with the cargo. You have to fly the whole way from wherever it is to wherever it's being delivered to without quantum jumping, which means usually the delivery will be within on the same planet. But you can't quantum jump with this, this card. Um, but you'll see you can make some decent money just grabbing a box and delivering it to another location. Um, but a lot of times these are not just one package. You have to pick up. So you have to collect packages. So you can collect all the packages from HGS Lathan on Ariel. And then you have to deliver them to three different places on Hurston. So you would go here, zoom out a little. Double right click to zoom out, double left click to zoom in. Ariel's here. HDMS Lathan is where you pick up those packages. Now, once you're locked on a planet, the only way is to double right click to zoom. There are changes to our map that will be coming at some point to make it much better, much more intuitive, but this is what we have to work with right now. So, I'll scroll in on double click and scroll in on Hurston. And then you'll see the different places that it requires you to deliver those packages to. And we'll actually, you know, so in the upcoming video, we'll actually do um, one of those missions to show you. Um, these are just different missions you can take. Bounty Hunter, um, when you first start out as Bounty Hunter, you will not, you'll have to do a Bounty Hunter assessment. The Bounty Hunter assessment, um, the is you have to pay like 500 UEC for it, so this is not something you're not going to jump straight into combat unless you feel really confident in it. Because if you fail, you lose that 500 UEC and you have to pay it again. So, not, not a route I'd recommend right off the bat um, if you just want to make some initial, initial starting capital and get yourself started. Um, definitely delivery missions. This is obviously search missions are another way you can make the piece. A ship that crashed and they had to find a certain number of bodies or collect valuable stuff. You can just bring anything and return them somewhere. Investigation. Um, you have to find people that go missing a lot of times. These may be um, around a crashed ship or they may be in a cave on the planet. Uh, maintenance, but so repair uh, something. Generally not worth doing. Um, mercenary stuff. These are all going to be oriented they do pay pretty well but so anytime you're doing combat oriented you'll be fighting you know, NPCs that have crimes they usually want to take call to arms because you get a bonus for every time you kill a ship uh, an NPC that has a crime stat depending on what the crime stat level is you get a bonus for you to pay up for um, different missions now there are stuff under personal sometimes will appear here a lot of the stuff under the personal tab can earn you a crime stat if we're doing it. A lot of it's illegal missions, generally, unless you plan on being a criminal. Um, and there are negatives to doing so. Don't don't select missions from here. Just to just stick in the general tab. And that's how you'll get started. So we'll actually, um, in the next video, we'll get into missions and how to make money. But this gives you a little idea of where to start if you just kind of dive in.
All right, everyone. So I hope you found that informative and instructive, and that will help you not flounder around for 30 minutes like I did when I first started the game and didn't watch any tutorials. I also managed to get myself into space and then promptly plow into Everest Harbor because I didn't know how to stop my ship. So hopefully this helps you avoid doing what I did. Uh, hope to see you around the verse, and uh, we'll see you in our next video. Thank you for watching.